day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. We are revising um, grade 10 maths, as you know, and we're just going to carry on with what we were doing in the last lesson. Um, basically, what we're doing is we're just working through an old exam paper that was provided by the Department of Education. And at the moment, what we're doing is we are solving for X and we got as far as we completed 3.1.6 and now we need to look at 3.1.7. So 3.1.7 is basically we're factorizing, right? And we've got 4A squared X minus 2A is equal to b squared x minus b. Now they've asked us to solve for x. So since I've got two terms that I've got x in it, I'm actually going to group these two together and then I'm going to put the other two on the other side of the equal sign. So I've got 4a squared x minus b squared x is going to be 2a minus b because when I take this minus 2 across it becomes positive 2a. I'm then going to divide both of these terms by x and you're left with 4a squared minus b squared is equal to 2a minus b. We then can divide both sides by the this bracket here, the 4a squared minus b squared. So we're going to divide both of these, 4a squared minus b squared, and this 4a squared minus b squared. This cancels with this, and we're left with x is equal to 2a minus b over, this is the sum and difference of two squares, so it's 2a minus b, 2a plus b, so do you agree I can cancel that and I'm just left with x is equal to 1 over 2a plus b. So there you go, so you've got the difference of your two squares, you must please notice that when you see the difference of two squares that you should factorize them so that you can cancel. And there you go, they we have solved for x and we've got the answer in the simplest term possible. Now, let's look at this. It says, given that minus 3 is smaller than 4 minus 2x is smaller than equal to 5. It says 3.2.1, it says, solve for x. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is solve for x. So we've got 4 minus 2x is smaller than equal to 5 and bigger than minus 3. So the way we do this is you need to think of just the left hand side of the equation first. So in order to solve this, do you agree we want to get the x's by itself? So we're going to take the 4 across to the side. So it becomes a minus 3 minus 4 is smaller than minus 2x. Now we need to look at the right hand side of the equation. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to take this 4, we're going to take it to the other side. So it becomes smaller than or equal to 5 minus 4. Okay. Then we again just let's neaten this up. So it's minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7, smaller than minus 2x which is smaller than or equal to one. Okay, now again, we're going to just look at the, pretend that only this part of the, react, the reaction, the equation exists, and we're gonna divide everything by minus two. If we do that, we've got minus seven divided by minus two, but when you divide your times by negative, what do you do with the inequality? You flip it, so that becomes greater than x, now we need to do exactly the same thing but with the right hand side, with the right hand side. Okay, so this time we divide in the 1 by minus 2. When we do that, we flip the sign so it becomes greater than or equal to 1 over negative 2. So then the final answer is x is greater than or equal to negative a half and smaller than minus divided by minus is a plus, so it becomes 7 over 2. Okay, so now they say, we've done that, ching Now they say, state your answer on a number line. Okay, so we have a number line. The smaller number is minus a half, and the bigger number is 7 over 2, which is the same as 3 and a half. 
Now, do you agree that you don't equal, it's x is smaller than 7 over 2. So it does not equal 3 over 3.5 three or 7 over 2, but it does equal the minus a half. And x is found between them. x is found between them. That is on the line, number line. Now we want the interval notation. An interval notation is going to be we include the minus a half, uh, minus a half, but we do not include the 7 over 2, so it's a curved bracket. So there you go. So this is the number line. This is the interval notation, and that's just solving for it like normal. Let's move on. Okay, so now we've got simultaneous equations that we need to solve, okay? So it says solve for x and y. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do it. The one way is elimination. The other way is through substitution. Basically, you if they don't tell you how to solve it, you can choose any method that suits you, any method whatsoever. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take call this equation 1, one and this equation two and i'm going to take equation two and solve it for y for me that is the easiest way to do this so we're going to do substitution so i'm going to go 2x plus y is equal to 2 therefore y is equal to 2 minus 2x and that is equation three okay so now i've got y as the subject of my formula and what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute, substitute this into, yeah. So we've got 4, and wherever we see, we see a y, we're going to write 2 minus 2x plus 3x equals 18. Let's multiply that out. So it becomes 4 times 2 is 8 minus 8x plus 3x equals 18. So we got, when we take that across, we're going to collect all the 8s and all the 18s and all the x's and all the non-x's together. Okay, so we've got minus 8x plus 3x is minus 5x, and 18 minus 8 is 10. So then what we need to do is we now need to solve for x by dividing by the minus 5. So let's do that. Let's divide by the minus 5. So we divide both sides by minus 5. And what do we get? We get um, that x is equal to negative 2. Right, now we need to solve for y. Now we need to solve for y. So we're going to go y is equal to substitute back into 3. I'm going to sub, you can actually substitute this x equals minus 2 into either equation 1 or equation 2 or equation 3. Okay. Right. So now what we're going to do is substitute this in. So but I'm choosing to substitute into equation 3 because it seems the easiest. So y is equal to 2 minus 2 to min times by minus 2, which is 2 minus times by minus is plus 4, which is going to be 6. There you go. So now, guys, you are not finished, okay? Um, I, you are not finished. You need to tell me that we're going through those points. So those points are minus 2, 6. x is minus 2, 6. Okay, so let us now do the next question because now we are finished yay right it says multiply out and simplify as far as possible so we got this multiplied with this and this multiplied with this okay so I think let's do it nice and slowly and multiply it out by writing out slowly so we've got 3 x to the a half times x to the a half 3 times minus is a minus, 3 times 2 is 6, and then we've got x to the a half times x to the negative a half. Okay, so now if we look at that, do you see that we've got 3, x to the half times x to the half. What do you do with the exponent? Because we've got the same base, we, we add the exponents, a half plus a half is 1. So that becomes 3 to the x minus 6 
This is x to the a half minus a half, right? Which becomes 3 x minus 6. x to the half minus a half is the same. This is the same as x to the 0. And you think to 0 is 1, so it goes away. So I would leave it as 3x minus 6. Your teacher might think that you should take out a common factor of 3 and leave you with x minus 2. Okay, I'm not sure. But I personally would leave that answer at that point there. Again, simplify fully. Okay, so if we're required to simplify fully, you've got, we've got to sort out this bracket, we've got to sort out the squared, and we've got some 12 to the power of 3 minus 2x, etc, etc. Okay, so I think the first thing we should do is break up this bracket. What do you think? So let's do that. So this becomes this 3 applies to everything in the bracket. It applies to the 2 and it applies to the 3, right? So that becomes 2 to the 3 times 3 to the 3x plus 3 all over because why because let me just take it a step slower let me just check it a step slower we've got we multiply this three with everything in the three is to the power of everything inside here so it's two to the three times by three to the x plus one all to the power of three all over now this this is a square root sign and the exponents associated with the square root is a half so you got 3, 16x to the half times by 12, 3 minus 2x. Okay, so now, do you agree that we've got 2 to the 3, 3 to the 3x plus 3, because that's the rule, you multiply across here, over... 3, 16 over divided by 2 is going to be 8x. And now we need to break this 12 up. Okay, we need to break this 12 up into its prime factors. So let's do 12 and let's find the prime factors of 12. 2 goes into 12 6 times. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 goes into 3 once. Okay. So then we've got all of this, which is 2 squared times by 3, all to the power of 3 minus 2x. Okay, so again, I'm just rewriting this. We've got 2 to the 3, 3 to the 3x plus 3 over 3 to the 8x. Now remember, this is multiplied with everything inside. So it becomes 2 to the 6 minus 4x, because 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times minus 2 is minus 4x, times by 3 to the 3 minus 2x. And now what we can do is we can gather our common bases, okay? Now, but remember that everything at the bottom must be subtracted, because when you divide, you end up subtracting your exponents, and when you multiply, you add. So what does that mean? It means we've got 2 to the 3 minus, the only other thing with a common base of 2, is 6 minus 4x times by 3 to the 3x plus 3 minus 8x, because that's at the bottom, minus bracket 3 minus 2x. Okay, you with me? So this is all of that, okay? So this year, was this whole thing. Now all we need to do is neaten it up. So let's just erase this and get this out of the way. And I'm going to change the different colors so you can see what I'm doing. So it's equal to 2 to 3 minus 6 is minus 3 times by, and minus times minus is a plus, it's plus 4x times by 3 so now let's write that out. It's 3x minus 8x is minus 5x plus 3. And then we need to get rid of this bracket. So it becomes minus 3 plus 2x. So that becomes 2 to negative 3. Um, plus 4x. 
3 minus 5x plus 2x is 3x. Okay, minus 3x. Plus 3 minus 3 goes away. So that's minus 3x. So therefore, if you want this, if they say you must always simplify and leave everything in positive exponents, then you'd have to say 2 to the 4x all over 2 to the 3 times by 3 to the 3x. There you go. Okay, sure. Okay, next. Okay, now this is still to do with exponents, but it's a little bit more confused, okay? Um, I mean, not confused, it's a little bit more complicated. So what we need to do is breathe a little bit and see how we can convert these things to look like this thing, okay? So do you agree that 8x could be broken down to, into 2 to the 3x, okay? Which is the same as 2x cubed, okay? 2x cubed, which means that that is a cubed. Sneaky question, hey? Let's look at this one. We've got 2 to the x plus 3. That is the same as 2 to the x times by 2 to the 3, which is the same as saying 8 times by 2 to the x, because 2 cubed is 8. But 2 to the x is a, so therefore this is 8a. Okay, now let's look at this next one. We've got 5 times 2 to the negative x, which is the same as saying 5 over 2 to the x, because that minus means we take it under, which becomes 5 over a. Ta-da! Okay, so it wasn't that complicated. Possibly the only one that really was complicated was this, because of that 3x people get a little bit confused. But otherwise, not that complicated at all. Right, let's look at this. Oh, that's a nasty one. It says factorize fully. Okay, we've got minus 7 x to the negative 3 over 8 plus 2 x to the minus 3 over 4 minus 4. Okay, so now if we look at this, this looks very, very scary. Okay, but let's let I don't know, p equal x minus 3 over 4. Then do you agree that p squared would be x to the minus 3 over 4 squared? Oh, that's interesting. I made a mistake. Okay, if we let, where was that W? X, P equal X minus 3 over 8, then P squared is X minus 3 over 8 squared, then the 2 cancels with this and you're left with X minus 3 over 4. So this is P squared, is X negative 3 over 4, and P is X negative 3 over 8. Then if I rewrite this thing, do you see I get minus 7p plus 2p squared minus 4? Which means I can rearrange this to become 2p squared, okay, minus 7p minus 4. The factors of 2 are 2 and 1, because now you can see it's easily see it's a trinomial, do you agree? The factors of 4 are going to be 2 and 2, or 4 and 1, or 1 and 4. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 is not going to work, so that's not going to work. 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 times 4 is 4, that's not going to work. But 2 times 4 is 8, and 1 times 1 is 1 works, because minus 8 plus 1 is equal to negative 7. So therefore, we can write it like this. And we can go 2p, and we want it to be plus 1. And then we're going to write p minus 4. 
Okay, that is your factorization. But P is X to the minus 3 over 8, right? So this becomes 2 X to the minus 3 over 8 plus 1. And then it becomes X to the minus 3 over 8 minus 4. And that's as far as you go. They don't ask you to solve for X. They're just asking you to factorize it. Okay, not too bad, eh? Just take it baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. Okay, let's look at the next question. They're asking us to solve 4 times 3 to the 2x minus 1, minus 1 third times 3 to the 2x plus 2 is equal to minus 1 and 2 thirds. So I think let's break these things up to see what they become. And let's make this an improper fraction. So it becomes 4 times 3 to the 2x times 3 to the negative 1 minus a third, 3 to the 2x and 3 squared is equal to minus 4. 1 times 3 is 3 times by 2 is, I mean, plus 2 is 5 over 3. Okay, so now... Do you see that this is the same as 4 over 3 times 3 to the 2x minus 9 over 3 times 3 to the 2x is equal to minus 5 over 3. So what I'm going to do is I multiply the whole thing by 3 to get rid of these denominators. So I've got 4 times 3 to the 2x minus 9 times 3 to the 2x is equal to negative 5. 4 minus 9 is minus 5 times 3 to the 2x. Why? Because we're basically saying that the 3 to the 2x is the same as an a. So we're getting 4a minus 9a is equal to minus 5a, 5a, right? Is equal to negative 5. Now we can divide both sides by minus 5, okay? Which means that we've got 3 to 2x is equal to 1. Okay, which means that 2x has to be equal to 0, therefore x equals 0. Why? Because anything to the 0 is equal to 1. There you go. So the correct answer for this is x equals 0. Sure, long question to get that answer here. Right, now it says given 17, 15, 13, dot, dot, dot. Write down an expression for the nth term of the sequence t to the n. Okay, so let's have a look at it. We've got 17, 15, 13. Do you agree that the difference between these two is minus 2 and the difference between these two is minus 2? So the common difference is minus 2. We know the formula is Tn is equal to a plus n minus 1d. The first term is a is 17 plus n minus 1 times by minus 2, which equals 17 minus 2n plus 2, which is 19 minus 2n. That's tn. So therefore, the expression for the nth term is tn is equal to 19 minus 2n. It says, hence determine the position of the term whose value is minus, minus 981. So we're trying to find the n. What is the n if this term is a value of minus 981? So we're going to go minus 981 is equal to 19 minus 2n. So therefore we've got minus 981 minus 19 is minus 2n. So that is going to be 1 and 9 is 0, um, carry 1, 1 and 8 is 9, that's going to be 1,000 is equal to minus 2n, so n has to be 500. So the position of the minus 981, the term that has the value of minus 981 is the 500th term. Huh, okay, now let's do the next question. It says 3x minus 1, 4x plus 7, 
2x minus 5. They are consecutive terms in the arithmetic sequence. Calculate the value of x. So this is term 1, this is term 2, and this is term 3. Term 1, term 2, and term 3. Okay? Do you agree that to find the value of x, we know that term 3 minus term 2 has to equal term 2 minus t1. So we can use that to find x. We can go, well, this is 2x minus 5 minus bracket 4x plus 7 is equal to 4x plus 7 minus bracket 3x minus 1. I don't know why I put a second bracket there to sound a second. It's on a roll. So now, do you agree we've got 2x minus 5 minus 4x minus 7 is equal to 4x minus 7 minus 3x plus 1. 2x minus 4x is minus 2x. Minus 5 minus 7 is minus 12. 5 minus 7 is 12, yeah. Is equal to 4x minus 3x is x. Minus 7 plus 1 is minus 6. Okay, so if we take everything to the one side, minus 2x minus x is minus 3x is equal to minus 6 plus 12. Therefore, minus 3x is equal to 6. Therefore, x is equal to negative 2. Ta-da! So there we found the value of x. Okay, not too difficult if you just understand that an arithmetic sequence has got a common difference. Right, now it says, given f of x is equal to 3x minus 7 and g of x equals 2, first it says determine f of 5. Okay, so what they're saying is they want the value of this when x equals 5. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to substitute and we're going to go f of 5 is going to be 3 times 5 minus 7, which means that's 15 minus 7, which is 8. So what we are saying is that there's a point on this graph that when x is 5, y is 8. Then they tell you g of x is 2. Okay, it's always 2. It's a straight line where it's always equal to 2. So it doesn't matter what the x value is, the value is always going to be 2. So therefore, g of minus 1 is 2. Okay. Right, now we're doing something a little bit more interesting. We've been given h of x. h of x is equal to minus 3x plus 2. Okay, it's a very standard equation, straight down graph. Now they say solve for x. If 2 h times x plus 4 minus 5x is equal to 6. Okay, so the, I think the first thing we need to do is find out what h of x plus 4 is. So wherever we see an x, we're going to write in x plus 4, okay? So h of x plus 4 is equal to minus 3 times x plus 4 plus 2. So that becomes minus 3x minus times the plus is a minus 12 plus 2, which is minus 3x minus 10, okay? So that is the h x plus 4. So now what we need to do is substitute this into there. So we've got 2 times minus 3x plus 10 minus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. 2 times minus 3x is minus 6x plus 20 minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. Minus 6x minus 5x is minus 11x, plus 20 minus 6 is plus 14 equals 0. So minus 11x is equal to negative 14. So x is equal to 14 over 11. There you go. Interesting question, hey, but different from what we used to do. Ooh. Okay, grade tens, that's it for today. We will continue with our extra lessons and our paper two revision on what's today, Wednesday, on Friday. Have a great day.